<laughs> Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. As promised in this video, we're doing Mercury in Aquarius through the houses. Yes. Uh, also very exciting because we're literally about to end the Mercury series. Next video that I'm going to make is Mercury and Pisces. And then we're just going to be fucking down with this Mercury series. Which is so great. <laughs> so great. Took me like what? Four months to make this. Excuse me. But I've been taking my sweet time. Per. So in my last video, we just spoke about, you know, the general archetype of Mercury in Aquarius people. We just talk, we spoke about like how they generally speak you know just an overall in general description of every mercury and aquarius person in the whole wide world now in this video we're gonna get a little a little more specific because as i said everybody could have a mercury and aquarius but we're all going to be thinking about different things because the houses tells us what like the topic we're talking about but then the 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 sign is how we're thinking about it you know what i'm saying so that's the little thing so i'll say it again the house is the topic you're going to be talking about and then the sign is how you're going to be talking about the topic you know and the how is going to be in an aquarius way but the what is going to depend on the house that it's in so that's why your houses are just as important as understanding the zodiac signs right so with that said let's get right into Speaking it about mercury and aquarius in the first house for all my aquarius rising gang gang brah you can tell you can tell i'm an aquarius rising by my forehead and my abnormally abnormally large eyes and my alien shaped face you know shout out to you if you have an alien shaped face and you're an aquarius rising with this yeah but anyway having your mercury and aquarius in the first house right so first house is your personality the relationship that you have with yourself how you treat yourself you know how you see yourself and then generally you, you know things dealing with yourself like your insecurities um you know you the people and the things that are in your personal life and how like the things that you use to generally deal with yourself you know so that can involve people or things or places you know but having mercury and aquarius in your first house you are one fucking selfish hoe <laughs> you are one selfish ass bitch yes you are but here's the thing it's it's a natural thing because having mercury in your first house you're just naturally always going to think about yourself you know and with this it's a lot better for you to just be around people that actually get you who have the same interest as you because if not especially if you're dating someone and like for example like i'll use myself right i'm into astrology and i'm into tarot and all of that shit right if i'm gonna date someone who's not into that it's only gonna frustrate me because i won't be able to talk about that and as much as aquarius is relatable they're still stubborn they're still fixed in their own ideology ideology so as much as me as an astrologer or whatever i can relate to a whole bunch like i can relate to a person who doesn't know a thing about astrology right i can relate to them and they can tell me about their life and whatever whatever i can relate to them but if it's a situation where like because they can't relate to me all it's gonna do is make me want to be around people who are into astrology and then make whoever i'm with feel left out or whatever you know so in order to avoid that like i just need to find people who are into astrology you know what i'm saying so i can be with people who share the same interests as me because if i'm not around people who share the same interests as me all i'm doing is just causing frustration all i'm doing is just causing a situation where it's like i'm either a i'm feeling left out around people which a lot of times aquarius Aquarius energy period will feel like they're just alienated from the world because they are like the aliens, you know But they'll feel very alienated from the world or they'll feel very um, Awkward just being around specific people, you know, because they just naturally exude like a very weird vibe or a very eccentric vibe, you know but <clears throat> With the first house like obviously though you'll grow up and then experience Being like oh fuck that I'm just my own person and fuck that I like who I am, you know but once you reach that, you'll realize that it's such a waste of your own time to make yourself like be associated with people who are not interested in the same thing as you or who don't you 
who don't deal with themselves similarly to you, how you do because how you deal with yourself you're an individual and you are very you're up to, you're independent you know you're up to doing things yourself where you don't need people you always feel like you don't need people and when you do um invite people into your into your life or into your projects or whatever it's mostly just because you know you want them there or you even want to put yourself in those situations but you as an aquarius rising with your mercury there you know damn well like if you wanted to leave you could just pick up and leave like suddenly you know you could decide to do that because you would feel like i don't need i don't need anyone and aquarius is very good with you know interacting with humans and you know making friends so at any point you know you you'll as an aquarius rising you'll and mercury you'll feel like i don't need to stay here you know you're not you're not someone that ever feels like you need people you know even though you do long to have friends that understand you because i think with this especially with this situation because you think about yourself and you're very selfish a lot it could be i don't want to say it's difficult to make friends but it's difficult to maintain them because you can make a friend very quickly but it's difficult for you to maintain those situations or those friendships especially when those people don't share the same interests as you especially when you start feeling like oh my god why is it that when i'm here speaking to these people like they never speak about anything that i like or we always speaking about shit that i don't give a fuck about you know what i'm saying it's like you especially with this it's very difficult for you to be relatable you know so one thing that can help you is to just be around people that do relate to the whole be, be around people who associate themselves with the same things that you associate yourselves with you know so in that way there's always a mutual understanding where there's always like uh there's always just an understanding of oh okay that aquarius mercury person in the first house they you know they're just like that you know because you could be around people if you don't if you're not associated with people who are in this, into the same vibes as you you know it'll be a situation where you'll feel like you know you're getting trapped in or you being closed in or you feel like um you're pretending a lot of the times and Aquarius energy is not about that. At, at least not for a long time. You know, because it's going to happen sometime in your life where you're like, fuck this shit. I actually don't give a fuck. And I want to just do my own thing, you know. Even even if it's in a small way, like, the, the rebellion is going to be there. One way or another, you know. So, just find people that are really... And I say this with all Mercury's in the first house. Just find people who are into the same or who are associated with the same interests, who deal, who are like as independent as you are. And you know, I'm also an Aquarius rising. I'm trying to find these people. Maybe just go so where I live right now. It's a very unfortunate situation. Wow, I'm living in the ghetto. Ratatata. And it's just nothing I can do about it right now. But like an Aquarius, listen, Aquarius, especially with this in the first house, you're always especially when you've been around people that you can't relate to you'll always feel like oh man like i can't wait to have friends that get me or damn i can't wait to have people around me that fucking get me because most of the time these niggas don't get me you know but generally you're a very selfish person and this with this with this placement you are very like selfish but also consumed with yourself you know like you only it's like you all really mostly care about yourself like you're only loyal to yourself if we're being honest if we're really being honest this is what it is you're only loyal to yourself and you only like see yourself you know what i'm saying because it's a situation where you even get suspicious you get suspicious of people that like always want to be around you because here's the thing with aquarius because aquarius always wants space so if you are around people who really like being around you you'll feel like oh my god that's us they want something from me but sometimes it's really just people admire you you know but because the opposite of you is leo leo likes that leo likes when people want to be around them and admire them and dress like they well maybe not because mm, they'll feel like they can only be one you know and same with you aquarius you feel like listen there i'm me and i hate when people try to be me because then they're not being authentic you know and like i said you like being around people who are individuals because then you don't have to feel like you have to overextend yourself you don't you don't feel like you have to do too much or you know be around the that's and that's why you play these mind games with people because it's really just a test for you to see how independent someone is or how much they're going to rely on you because you don't want you don't want any responsibilities because you're already dealing with incredibly hectic thoughts in your brain about you know 
life and shit. And you don't want to be, you know, dragged down by other people's bullshit. So you like being around people that know how to hold their own and don't make you feel obligated to hold anything for them. At least even for a long time, you know, that vibe. Um, but yeah, that's it. And of course, you're, you're a genius, you know, you already know that. Your career is rising, okay? You already know the. You already know it. <laughs> um, moving on to Mercury and Aquarius in the second house. So we know your second house deals with your values and the things that you have and the things that you possess, right? So think of you possess a body, clothes, hair, eyeballs, a face, a voice. You know, you have a whole bunch of shit that you can offer or that you can, you know, use to essentially sustain yourself. So if you can sing, you have a voice. You have a beautiful. You have a beautiful voice. You can use your beautiful voice to attain stability because the second house is an earth house. And we know earth houses, earth signs deal with stability, practicality, organizing your life, structuring your life, longevity. So you're not poor or, you know, you have some kind of security and something to lean on to exist in this world. So having Aquarius in the second house as a, what, as a Capricorn rising. So this... Having second house placements, especially in Mercury, entails that you have a very beautiful voice. But I feel like with this, you probably have a very raspy voice. And I know, like, I know a shorty with this, um, and she has a very deep, raspy voice. And she's so fun. It's so sexy. Like, that's the one thing that I want to fucking show her my titties. Because her voice is so beautiful. It's so, like, deep and raspy. But it's, like, and it's masculine because Aquarius energy is very masculine. But I've noticed like with females with this, they just have like this edginess to them, you know. And they remind me of Pink. Like back when Pink was like a rock star, that type of thing, you know. It's just like such a dope voice. But naturally like what you think about is like, you know, who... Naturally what you think about is how you can... Or who you can associate with, right. And who you can share resources with. So... Your resources would be your ideas, right? So you value your ideas. And this is what you're constantly thinking about. Because you value the way you think. Like, you value the fact that the way you think is so unique and original. And if your son is here too, if your son is in the second house conjuncting your Mercury, you're naturally someone who values, like, just the way you see things. So this adds, on a, this adds to a double stubbornness. So this is... And because you value how you think, and you think your thoughts are something that you can offer... This adds on to, like, a, as, a, as I said, like, a double emphasis on being super, super, super stubborn. Because you value how you think. You value your stubbornness. And you feel like someone... A, you feel like people who try to change you, like, they're not, they're not necessarily considering the fact that you value your own thought processes. Because how you even come to conclusions most of the time, the process that you took is... Even beginning to explain it to someone, you would probably sound crazy. Like, you know, and this, this, here's the thing with Aquarius. It's like a very slippery slope with, nigga, do you need to be in a straight jacket? Or, you know, are you like a genius type shit? You know, you, you know what I'm saying? Because next to you is Pisces and Pisces also deal with that same shit. But Pisces really, you'll feel like a Pisces needs to be. Like, sometimes you'll feel like a Pisces needs to be in a mental institution, you know, just based on the things that they say, because they have the unrealistic thing, because they're opposite Virgo, Virgo is a realistic sign, opposite to Virgo is Pisces, so they'll be unrealistic, or they'll be more prone to be unrealistic, you know what I'm saying, or viewing the world unrealistically, but Aquarius, um, but yeah, that's the little thing, but yeah, Aquarius, it's just a slippery slope with, nigga, do, do you need help, or are you good, or are you just, you know what I'm saying, but that's naturally like you're very you value your 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 brain and your words and you feel like this is something that you can offer to the world you know offering offering ideas and you'll feel like people who who feel like you're too weird or people who don't agree with you you'll feel like these people and hey, you'll feel like okay these people are stupid fucking dummy you don't even think how I think because you're so stupid and you, whatever that you know you know how you guys get. Or second, you'll feel like if you're even around people who, you know, sometimes you're around like there are some shy people that when they speak, they don't have the confidence to say what they say with their chest, you know, like you'll feel like these people don't value what they have to say. So you won't also value what they have to say. And then here's where you speak over people because you'll feel like, okay, we're giving you the time speak and then also own what you say, because when you speak. You value what you say. So you have this, you know, this confidence about you when you communicate, you know. Because you value what you say. But then be around niggas who you feel 
don't value what they say here you go speaking over them because you'll feel like ah, oh, okay you're taking up time let me show you how to do it let me show you how to be confident in what you say like you need to you'll be like the way you it, it's like you exude hey dude this is how you be confident with what you say you know that type of thing but naturally you feel like that you you know you you see your um you see your brain and you see your thoughts as something that you can offer the world. So these, you probably someone that probably, you know, um, you would start a YouTube channel or um, you probably get paid to communicate, you know, because this is something that you offer to the world. You know, that's something that you have, your brain and your intelligence. Oh, your very dope ass raspy voice. That's so sexy and so fucking intriguing. Oh, it's so delicious. You know, <laughs> um... But yeah, naturally with this, you're very good with money. It's just you probably make money in very weird ways, you know. But you naturally, because you have Capricorn in your first house. So your first house is a Saturn rule. So you already are someone that's very aware that you have to have structure and be self-sufficient, you know. It's just now with your resources, aka your second house also unique things so you also may have a very unique talent a weird talent a secretive talent that you pop out you know like a party trick that you only use special times to surprise people that type of thing um but yeah that's aquarius mercury in the second house you guys are like just rude because you cut people off because you also like talking about things that you value you know it's similar to the first house but at least first house, actually no, first house is the same because they also cut people off. You cut people off because it's like, okay, well, I'm not interested in this. This has nothing to do with me, nothing to do with my interest. Okay, boom, cut it off. Let me talk about my things. Guys, this is what I think. 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 And then people are like, okay, well, we want to let you know what we think. And then you're like, the fuck, did you just try to interrupt me? And it's like, well, yeah, we're trying to speak. And then you're like, Ugh. you guys are like weird. I'm going to dip. And then you just want to ghost people. And it's like, bro why <laughs> okay so aquarius mercury in the third house right so we know third house deals with your environment your friends your siblings um, and just how you interact with your environment you know your immediate environment so just think of like how you are if, even in new places like how you soak in the environment you know that's just how you interact with that that's third house you know um and having your Mercury in the third house, Mercury likes being in the third house because it, it rules here because Mercury likes to interact and like um, gain information from the environment that it's in, you know, so it's home here. So having Mercury, if this is what Sagittarius rising, super cool rising, by the way, um, having Mercury in, in Aquarius in the third house, these guys are like, not only are you someone that is easy, like you can make friends with literally anybody, right? Because... It's like you can even meet someone for the first time and the way that you talk to them because that's that's even the way you talk to the the friends you've been friends with for three years. Like you would speak the same way to someone you just met. Like you would speak to someone you just met like you've been friends forever. But it's it's not even a situation where you're all like, um, like lovey-dovey or like, hey, bitch, or hey, best friend. It's just like... Listen, you have a unique way of communicating. So you will be friendly and sarcastic to everybody. Your friend, Maybe your friends will get the, the more harsh side, the more detached, cold side. And then people that you don't know, like the newcomers or the new humans that you haven't met. When they start, like when you meet them, they'll get the more friendly, like, um, yeah, the more friendly humanitarian side of you, you know. And it's like, you know how to make people feel like, like you just know how to make people feel good and people feel cool to be around you you know it's just like and here's the situation with air signs here's a little situation with the air signs is that because you know how to relate because you know how to communicate because you know how to interact you know a lot of the times you could be saying things in a way that puts in the mind of somebody that you intend to be their friend and if you're around a Taurus, Scorpio, Cancer, they'll feel like, oh, okay. Because they take things, you know, more seriously or lo more longevity. So when you enter their lives, they're looking at you like, okay, you're about to be there forever. You know, up and down, whatever. But an Aquarius Mercury, oh, Air Mercury is 
when they communicate they're really just communicating for the interaction of it you know and because they all naturally have charm in common and they all naturally have relatability in common even though aquarius relates in a more unique not so relatable way but that's still a cool way because people fuck with them for that you know it's it's very it's like sometimes you can accidentally make people feel like you know you're always gonna be there or you i don't know you just and it's not your fault because i really i don't want to sit here and say you should work on not being so because that's really just how air signs are you know we relate mercury air mercuries we relate we communicate but we and in the time you'll feel like yeah that's the right thing to do like is to communicate is to you know be friendly is to have a friendly welcoming disposition you know because it's vibe like let's all vibe out you know our opposite our fire signs fire signs are all about having fun having a good time you know so air signs innately also have that in them so people but you know, people get it fucked up sometimes because they'll think like oh this is a forever thing and an air mercury is probably gonna forget you tomorrow because they're gonna meet a whole bunch of new people tomorrow you know what i'm saying like <laughs> it's really like that it's really like that you know but having a mercury in aquarius in the third house like this is how you are with just your environment in general you know so it's it also a situation where sometimes you may feel like your environment is um what's the word it could suffocate you because you also want to experience a whole bunch of new um new environments and be around you know other environments that you don't know of like if you've grown up your whole life um in a small town for example like i'm in a pretty small town you know and if you grow up in a small town you're gonna feel the urgency to just get the fuck up out of there and you know like go explore new towns and be around just new environment you know change changing your environment you know because here's the thing with Aquarius like they don't also want to be in one place for too long you know because they need stimulation just as much as Sag and Gemini's do they need stimulation to get up and you know exercise their intellect and exercise their social skills and get to us and you know god forbid sometimes you you you'd also be in an environment that you don't that you can outgrow people you know in those situations like you really would feel like oh my god like i i need to get the fuck out of here i need to 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 you know it's that urgency because you need stimulation and you need to be around other people who also stimulate you to think or add on to your very unique thoughts or even just for you to be around people that you know you feel like oh okay now i can learn from these people and these people can also learn from me too you know but i think with this this makes you this could make you like adhd where you have issues with concentrating you know because you may you may think so much that you forget to stop and think about like what the fuck just happened you know because you may be such a rapid person you may be and you also very for oh my god oh my god you are so forgetful with this placement very forgetful with this placement you the type of person that you tell a story and i have a friend like this aquarius mercury aquarius mercury but there's in the first place first house but it's the same with the third house where he'll he'll tell me a story and then he'll forget that he told me that story and then when i see him again he'll tell me that story again and i'll be like yeah dude i know you told me that again and he'll be like really damn okay and then the next time I see him, he'll tell me the story again. And it's like, okay, dude, what the fuck, bro? But I don't know. I, I don't know. He's forgetful. But I think also sometimes it could, it, you also could just be playing a mind game just to see if someone is listening. You know, it really could go either way. Because with Aquarius, you sometimes will never know. You know, you'll just really never know with these people sometimes. But I feel like... Um, yeah with these people you just they just need mental stimulation so they always and they like a challenge you know they just like picking picking people's brains but not it may not always be rooted in like sinister in being sinister even though aquarius can do that you know because aquarius can be fucking cult leaders and shit like that and make you do make people do crazy shit because with this it can make you very persuasive you know because it's like you you will have an idea and you'll believe in that idea so much and you'll like you know be very confident and um what's the word stable or loyal to whatever idea you have that when you present it to somebody else because you're so because you believe in it so much you can make somebody else believe in that idea and that that could be a lie too you know
You could be literally lying your ass off, but just because you sound like you believe it, like you could convince people to also do that. So in that way, you can be manipulative, you know, but also you could be manipulative in the way that you just, you understand how other people think so you can play on how other people think and then make them do or think things in the way that you orchestrated them to be that type of thing, you know, um, but yeah, for the most part, like, I feel like you guys are, you guys are, like, super cool to be around, especially with, you probably have a lot of friends with this, you know, it's like, you move away, and it's, it, you make friends so easily, it's like, you, you travel in different areas, and then, and the way that you make friends, it's like, people obviously really, really fuck with you, because you exude that Aquarius energy, you know, and you, you can speak to anybody about, a whole bunch of things it's just that you don't you you avoid like conversations that could lead to you know so guys how do you feel about something or maybe you don't avoid situations like that but it's like you also like to put a boundary and a restriction on how much we talk about our feelings because you don't want to get too lost into that you know because that's something that Aquarius people fear is being overpowered by an emotion because Aquarius is deal with power and control issues just like Scorpios do, you know? It's just that an Aquarius doesn't want anybody to control them and they also don't want to control anybody, you know? Because they'll feel like, oh my god, why do I have to take responsibility for these people when I have my own things going on? Oh, it could also be a different way, you know? Because once again, Aquarius can be good cult leaders too, you know? So it's just, it, it goes on a... Um, it's a person-to-person -person basis. But I feel like I want to say most... Let me say most Aquariuses, if they don't have any Aries, Capricorn, or Scorpio in their chart. Oh, even if they do have Capricorn... I guess they have one Capricorn placement. You know? Like, maybe. Maybe. Maybe they'll be a, lo a lot more opt to want to control people. But for the most part, like, the Aquariuses that I know don't really care about controlling people and if they do it's more so because like that person has something that they want and then once they get that they're gonna be done and then they don't want to control that person anymore you know but i feel like yeah aquarius is just they like the room to do and roam and do whatever the fuck they want to you know it's also the thing i feel like they don't want to feel once again obligated to keep providing that same energy to you because they don't have that time. They have this. You guys are consumed with your own thoughts, you know, especially with this. So yeah, that's Mercury in Aquarius in the third. So house. Mercury in Aquarius in the fourth house, right? For Scorpio risings, we I mean, know fourth house has to deal with your roots, your family, your background, your family background, how you grew up, you know, your family members, and your comfort zone. You know, just how you make yourself feel comfortable. Naturally, having Aquarius in the fourth house entails that you probably had a very cold, um, distant family, and that innately taught like taught you to keep your emotions frozen and all to yourself. And then you're the type of person that cries alone at night by yourself. You know, oh, you know, you just grew up having to be independent in how you deal with your own emotions, that type of thing. Um, but having Mercury in Aquarius in the fourth house, these people. Do I know someone like this? I thought I knew someone like this. Okay, let me say it like this. So naturally having a crate in your fourth house, you may be someone that, you know, either had parents or family members that were very distant. It was unpredictable. You grew up in a very unpredictable home where people left and they came back or, you know, or maybe you want to leave, you know. But having Mercury in Aquarius in the fourth house, I feel like this will make you a lot more um, empathetic to how you communicate and like other people's um, interaction with you, you know, because having Mercury in water houses makes you a lot more, what's this, um, emotionally in tune with conversations, like you tune into people's vibe, like you, how you communicate, you, you know how to add like an emotional thing to there, you know but because Aquarius is ruled by Saturn there's still that like restriction you know so you may also how you think is like it's like you you think about you know these things and your family members you're probably very family orientated with this but it's more so like your friends are your family you make your friends your family and then you start thinking about your friends a lot 
you know it's like whenever you choose to make decisions you always think like okay my homie my homie's probably gonna do this oh my homie's probably gonna do that you know but it's also a thing of sometimes you may also put restrictions and boundaries on like what you do with your homies and what you don't do and how much you share of yourself with your homies because like saturn is always there so saturn is always going to put some kind of boundary and restriction or you know in aquarius's case it's going to be some kind of distance detachment ghosty type vibes but that's all rooted in just putting a restriction and a boundary in there you know so i feel like with this you somebody who thinks about i feel like you think about fully being independent because like fully being independent and in how you deal with your own emotions because it could be a situation where you grew up in an environment that taught you that you had to be responsible for your own emotions you know and then in that sense you dealt with your own emotions by being it's like when somebody tries to connect to you or when people try to connect to you you have like all these cold distance stay in your space stay over there type type you know type situation you know so or you know you sl you have to melt very very you melt very very slowly for people you know so naturally how you think is okay i i can be friends with people but i also have to put a boundary a boundary and a restriction on like how much i give to myself with people or i have to put a boundary and restriction on you know um yeah how much energy and time that i give to people you know because i feel like with this it's like it's easy for you to read in between the lines and understand like what people's intentions are and what they're hiding because with this i feel like it also makes because having mercury in your in water houses makes your thoughts private you know it because water houses are private houses so this makes you, you you it's like you keep your thoughts private and you keep your thoughts to yourself and you're scorpio rising with this so definitely someone that you know you don't speak that much i feel like this makes you more of an observer than you are a communicator and then when you do communi communicate you don't you always like to put put private or make private what you truly think about a situation you know so you may only present some aspects of what you think you know and like because you know how to communicate you know how to make that little bit seem a lot but then you you want to keep your real opinion to yourself and then when someone only when someone backs you up into a corner or when you need to like that's when you'll be honest in communicating what you've been hiding and then it's like people are shocked that you actually thought that and it's like whoa you've been keeping that or you've been hiding that for this long but to you it's like yeah well you know you didn't have to know that that was private that was a private thought that i had just for myself to think about you know that's it so yeah oh shit i have to put this like this so yeah you'll be the type of person to be like yeah i'm just keeping this thought private to myself you keep your thoughts very private oh i feel like i want to say you're, you're the type of person that only speaks when spoken to but yeah it could be that's that type of situation but i feel like you do communicate it's just that you know how to keep your real thoughts private and then you know how to I guess initiate a conversation where people can talk about something that completely diverts um a topic so that it's not focused on hey trying to get you to say exactly what you think you know because you don't always want to be so open and accessible for people to read your mind like that so you put a boundary and restriction on how much people can read from you you know that type of thing moving on okay. to mercury in aquarius in the fifth house so we know fifth house and for libra rising so libra risings all your zodiacs are flipped so having aquarius in your fifth house um aquarius aquarius is in its opposite house because it's naturally home in the 11th house so in the fifth house it's um in the leo house which is as i said it's the opposite house so but i feel like having mercury in the fifth house makes these people like super loud because already Aquari Aquarius is a masculine sign, right? So it's, it's an air sign. So having it also in a masculine house, because it's a fire house, it also just gives it like this very large like voice. Like you have a very loud voice, you know? But you're also someone that's like, it's like you're always laughing, you know? And you always like make jokes and you like being around people who are like this. Because then it also gives you a feeling of like, oh, okay, I don't have to always like, um... It's like, you know, sometimes people will always try to probe and try to get you to be vulnerable and shit. Especially if you're on, like, a lot of water signs or um, if you're on fire signs. They may, I mean, fire signs are uh, more better because, you know, it's always a vibe. But sometimes fire signs can also just provoke some shit. And then Aquariuses don't... Aquariuses aren't about the drama, you know? 
unless they want to be. But a fire sign constantly needs some kind of spice. And Aquarius sometimes will get irritated with this because it's like, oh my God, dude, I'm not in the mood for this shit, you know? But so that's why I say like with Aquarius, like they like to be around fun people, you know? They like to be around spiky people who don't always make the topic about how we feel or don't make the so you know they don't like being around people who always want to like kill the mood or you know when aquarius especially in the fifth house aquarius i mean aquarius mercury in the fifth house they naturally always when they communicate they, they sound very funny but once again because they have saturn they have the opportunity to you they know when to switch it off and switch it back on you know they know when to um, be serious and then they know when to when to be goofy but naturally the disposition like when when they're in their most comfortable state of being even oh well, let me say when they're with their friends especially you know with their associated people that they're associated with you'll get the, it, when it's not when it's not serious vibes because obviously like if it's work related you have to be a lot more professional you know but outside of professionality or whatever these are the type of people that like like to talk and when they talk they are loud as fuck right and they are laughing but they're the ones making their own jokes and laughing at their own jokes and you know they're not gonna stop to explain a joke because you should get it and you should have the common sense to understand so yeah mercury people mercury Aqu aquarius mercury in the fifth house people these guys what they naturally think about it's like they have their own unique humor and it can be disguised as dark humor, but at the same time, because once again, it's an air sign, you won't, you won't get this. It's like, you won't be so, it won't feel so heavy, but you will feel the influence of Uranus day. So you will get the sense that like, oh, okay, wait, like how you said that, that was weird. Like how you said that joke, that was weird. And also because it's the fifth house, like you will be very loud and have a very flamboyant voice, you know. As I mentioned, like it's a queer, so it, it is a masculine sign. So masculine signs naturally have like louder voices. And because it is ruled by like um Saturn. Saturn is also androgynous, like low-key, like Mercury. So, but it's for the most part, it's very masculine because of the emotional fading thing that you know so it, it will lean more onto the masculine side of it you know it's just more of the you know it has more discipline and more like integrity and self-respect that type of shit but also uranus is there so it makes it unique and cool and original and rebellious so it's just like its own thing it's doing its own thing you know so naturally even with you like your own humor is based around like your own experiences but then the way that you explain these experiences <coughs> excuse me it's very unique but also just like yeah just like super weird and de and detached too it's like you're the type of person you have like you do weird sounds with your voices and your humor is just like doing weird shit like making weird faces like <laughs> like that that type of shit that you know they're just doing weird crazy shit that's humor to you because like humor to you is just I guess being weird, like doing weird things, saying weird things, making weird sounds, you know, and making weird sounds with the weird, like, <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> like doing weird shit like that. My brother, my brother, he's a Libra rising too, so he has Aquarius in his fifth house, right? So it plays out. I mean, you naturally having a Libra rising, having Aquarius in your fifth house. Let me just say, having Aquarius in your fifth house, like how you are, you either like super weird, super goofy. Like my brother does weird shit when he's playing around. He likes to like get up in my face and then he'll do things like this, like, ooh, ooh, ooh. And I'm like, get the fuck away from me, you weirdo, you know? And he's, he's either like that or he's completely detached. So that's the same with you. You're either like super goofy, super fun, or you're like super detached. And when you get into that detached bag, you're probably very tired or you just, you know, frustrated, irritated, whatever. And then in that sense, you're just like, okay, bro. Like in those instances, like you give off the cold, aloof, don't talk to me type of eyes, you know? So like with you, you're also an extremist. You're either super funny, communicative, or you're not. And then when you're not, you're just analyzing, you know, you're busy watching people. And then it's kind of like confusing because it's like, whoa, bro, like you were funny here yesterday. Now you're like weird. But then again, you also don't want to feel obligated. You don't want people to make you feel obligated or make you feel like you always have to 
present a specific you know mood you know that's the type that's the thing with aquarius because even though it's fixed so it's it is consistent but it's consistently unpredictable you know and also the aquarius sign in conjuncts virgo and cancer so aquarius naturally misunderstands how to have routines and they misunderstand how to have emotional closeness with people because of that in conjunction with the cancer with the fourth house and the sixth house you know cancer and virgo so that's a little that's so a little yeah thing. moving on to mercury and aquarius in the sixth house right for the virgo risings so six houses things that you do on a daily basis your routines your health you know um your daily responsibilities your daily duties things that you have to do on a daily day basis you know um yeah it's your health how you deal with your health and it's the obligations that you set for yourself to do every day like for example we all have to brush our teeth every day i not have to but you kind of have to brush your teeth every day if you don't want them to rot or you know be disgusting or whatever you know anyway but having aquarius here like aquarius in the sixth house naturally in conjuncts itself so naturally as an as a virgo rising you will feel like even having a routine sets you in a trap you know so you having aquarius in the sixth house makes someone have to have their own schedule have to you know have to do their own thing because if not then you always have to find a way to rebel and you know set some space so that you can do your own thing you know i'm pretty sure even at school you were the type of person that you couldn't go to school consistently like every day for a month you know you had to have some days where you skipped school or maybe you had a strict parent because obviously it will depend so maybe you had a strict parent so you're the type of person that you're like fuck this i'm gonna go bunk school i'm just sit in the bathroom the whole day so in that sense you had that rebellion you know because for you it's like you have to be able to set your own um daily routines because even for you having a daily routine is just like why why do we have to do this you know because for you you want to be able and it's like the things that happen to you on a daily basis can be so like a lot of unpredictable things happen even in minor ways like things that you don't expect happen to you almost every day and it's like sudden shit because you could even be a, you could be you could even be a person where um like you have accumulated friends and then all of a sudden something happens that you can't like you don't hang out with them anymore or you completely change you switch friends you know it's like sudden like sudden shit happens to you on a daily basis you know but mercury likes to be in the sixth house because here in Mer like mercury gets to think about how to organize its like life and organize its health and organize its daily routines and organize you know how it wants to live on a daily day basis so Mercury likes that. Mercury likes to be in the sixth house, you know, because it's like Mercury and Virgo. And then Mercury and Virgo just likes to think about how to organize shit. And Mercury likes to organize, you know. Mercury likes to put things together, put the puzzles together. So when Aquarius is here, you naturally, you're always thinking about how to, like, structure your thoughts. Like, your thoughts are structured, but they're very unique. You're like the type of person to have a messy room, but you know where everything is. Like, you know where everything you know where you put your lip gloss, you know where your panty was, you know where your book was, you know, and it's a complete mess, but you understand your mess, you know, because it's your mess, and then you just have a person where if someone has to come and change it, like, you either rage, or you're like, huh, I think I like it there, you know, but it's also unpredictable, because you would also never know when you like something, but that's just naturally what you go through on a daily basis, you know, but when you think about things, you're like, you, you like to organize your thoughts in specific category, categories, like, you like to organize your thoughts, you know, or even your thoughts could be messy, but you understand where it, it, it's still, it's like you, you're like an organized mess, basically, you know, and how you even deal with your health, you're not someone that's a health freak, because you probably eat whatever the fuck you want, you know, and you probably, and if you have a Virgo rising, you're probably naturally, like, slim. Like, I know a lot of Virgo rising humans are slim in some way, even if they're a little bit thick, they somehow slim, like, something about them, or their face, you know, they just have, like, a, they're not, like, curvaceous, like, Taurus risings, or Cancer risings, Leo risings, um, Scorpio rising sometimes. They're naturally, like, always, always super skinny and, like, look healthy, but look kind of nervous you know look like you're on edge or something yeah uh yeah 
you are real. anyway but yeah and actually how you deal with your health is like a very unique way and you don't even like people telling you how to do things it's like aquarius energy genuinely has an issue with people even in the slightest way even suggesting sometimes like how you know like if for example i'm friends with you an aquarius mercury in a sixth house person and i'm telling you you should probably go vegan you know you as an aquarius rising I and mean, aquarius mercury in the sixth house you will feel like bitch or human how dare you okay i am very mentally powerful you don't think i would have come to the conclusion myself what is the ben the most beneficial diet for me like you don't think that i know how to think that i should eat these things you know and then that's when you start to rebel against shit or maybe it's opposite where you know you probably grew up in a meat eating family and then you rebel against that and then you you know you're the only vegetarian in your home you're the only vegan in your home you know and then you're the one busy judging everybody for eating meat you know only for you later on to not be a vegetarian and then eat meat again and then when people are like oh really and then you want to get all like yo this is my body i do what i want fuck your opinion and you know it's like oh wow aquarius because that's the thing like even even if you are stubborn because you are stubborn with your thoughts it's like it's still in uranus is there so there is that changeability you always do change your mind you always have the opportunity to change your mind and you probably do always change your mind but it's like when you make a decision for yourself you stick to it and you become loyal to that decision unless uh, until you you know change your mind about it and then you become loyal to a new decision you know that's a little confusing that's how you confuse people you know cuz even like you can also um like you could be you can make like for, you could be friends or be friends someone make them feel all good like oh yeah this aquarius person really fucks with me uh uh and then all of a sudden you know not talk to them anymore because in your head you felt like okay nah this this girl you know you or you make up whatever reason you make up and you like nah i don't want to include her in you know in my life cuz once again is that you you're not someone that likes to like having a queer in your 6th house and you naturally in conjunct having routines right so when you even sit like when you meet a person or when you befriend someone or when you even date someone you don't like routines in your interactions like as i said you don't like the obligation of feeling like oh we have to do this all the time or we have to speak all the time or we have to always be lovey dovey all the time or, we always you know what i'm saying that's not your thing like routines you like when things happen unexpectedly like you thrive in them situations you know especially if you have this with your moon sign then you probably someone that like you probably naturally manifest a lot of like unpredictable situations but you're you you like that cuz you're home in that unpredictability and you're not someone that takes um you don't take like changes in your life very hectically like a Taurus if something changed in a Taurus's life it will affect them because of the routines and the stability that they set within that routine. So Taurus is like having something that they do every day, you know, cuz that gives them something to be grounded on and love and appreciate. Aquarius is hate that shit. They hate it, hate it, hate it, you know? So even in the 6th house, they naturally in conjunct the 6th house, right? So they misunderstand having a routine. That's why with Aquarius like they 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 will hate they probably hated going to school and if they, even if they didn't hate going to school because they're probably super geniuses and they you know passed everything and they were super smart and they got great great straight A's but they also it's just the the idea and the the fact that you always have to be there and follow a routine like constantly or if, maybe not even school just even like a job or whatever it is that they do they like things happening kind of like unexpectedly or um what's the, not inconsistently but um you know when things happen but not in a routine what's the word for that uh it is inconsistent like that's the opposite but there's another word that I'm looking for you know what i mean you guys know what i mean it's like you you know you just like having some kind of refreshing newness you know you like new things you like to set out new things and you like cuz it keeps your your curiosity alive and it keeps the stimulation alive you know cuz routines you don't really have to think too much about like washing dishes 
oh cooking or you know doing mon- mundane things like you know a lot of the times like cleaning you don't really have to th- it doesn't require a lot of brain power you know and aquarius is all about like accumulating brain power and doing like rick, you know remember that episode of um rick and morty pickle rick where rick didn't want to go to the um to therapy and then that lady further went to explain that rick is just a super smart person and doing mundane things is just super boring it, it doesn't like entice or challenge his great mind because it's so boring you know that's how you think too it's like oh my god like what does having a fucking routine do for my brain it doesn't challenge me it doesn't make me excited or anything so you just feel like oh wow this is a waste of my fucking time so that's why you also put things off or you forget things or you know you just don't place any emphasis on doing or on anchoring yourself so even with this you may be someone that your your days like every day of your life it just it's like wonky there's no like reliability yeah i'm gonna use that word there's no reliability in your words because a lot of shit changes and it's unpredictable and also you don't know but you like not knowing because it's like yeah and you like predicting though you know it's the the fun part is like coming up with the hypothesis and guessing the conclusion and then seeing how the whole shit unravels you know what i'm saying that's how you guys think you know because you like the challenge of things and you know, you like the, the 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 process of like seeing things uncover and proving yourself right. Like, ah, oh, I fucking knew that was gonna happen, and you give yourself a pet. Like, ah, oh, look at you being a genius again. You go, you know. That's Mercury and Aquarius in the sixth house. You know, these guys are like. I mean, on one end, they could be health orientated. Like, they, on one end, they genuinely could be health orientated. But I also feel like they don't really place that much emphasis on keeping a healthy body, you know, because, oh well, oh well, you know, for them it's an oh well thing. Aquarius is, if, it's like Aquarius is very distant from caring about their body, you know, because, especially with the sixth house, because you may feel like even doing that puts you in a cage, you know, so you just feel like, oh well, let me just freestyle my health, I eat whatever I want. And whenever I don't want to eat something, I won't eat it, you know? And then in that way, you're fully in control of your own life. And you just let things be. And you also don't take too kindly to people telling you how you should live your everyday life, you know? Especially, like, pertaining to, like, a specific job. Like, this is this gives you um, entrepreneurial, en- entrepreneurial vibes to you, you know? You are a lot more... Um, equipped to run your own business and being uh, being an uh, uh, entrepreneur because you set out your own goals and your own schedules and you can do whatever you want at your own time without feeling the obligation that okay i have to do this today you know so yeah okay so mercury in aquarius in the seventh house these people with what's this Leo Risings, right? So, we know 7th house has to deal with your relationships, how you interact with people on a one-on-one basis. Like, usually these are close people. So, 7th house is how you relate to people that are closer to you, you know, on a more intimate level. Um, and basically, just the, the people that you attract, you know, and how you... Um, yeah, let me just say how you interact with people that you are close with, you know, on a one-on-one basis. I feel like naturally having Aquarius in the seventh house, how you interact with people is, or the people that you attract are very detached, but also how you interact with people is on a, it's like, it's like once you get close to people, that's when you start to detach. (laughs) Your love language, or let me say the people that you attract their love language is to be detached with you. Because naturally these people are teaching you to like, you know, grow some independency because as a leo rising you naturally like to have a posse around you or have people around you that admire you or even just be the center of attention but having aquarius here like the people that you attract want you to be an individual because they are usually inconsistent you know in their communication but with that having mercury in aquarius in the seventh house i feel like the way that you naturally think and communicate is like you're always thinking about other people you know you're always thinking about other people but it's always in relation to 
um, A, your own interests. So you most of with this maybe a user, you know, you could always only be around people based on, you know, the the things that they can give you or the people they can introduce you to or the people, yeah, the people that they can introduce you to, like, um, you could use them as a connect, you know what I'm saying? You as an Aquarius Mercury in the seventh house, you could use people as a connect. Or you could only befriend people. You could be the type of person that only befriends people just based on um, what you can gain from them. You know, in that sense. But on the, on another sense, on another side, you could also be someone that like what you constantly think about is like the relationships that you had. You know, you may be someone who deeply cares about the friends that you have or the the close relationships that you have, and that may be very few because having Aquarius placements does entail that you are very um you hold your time and your energy very sacred. You know, so only a select few people will get to know like the full spectrum of the coolness of you you know but at the same time because Aquarius is so detached and unpredictable and un unpredictable you know and kind of aloof as I say like within these relationships you could be someone that genuinely need, you just need space away from the people that you're close with otherwise you know you just start treating them like shit and that's just how it is like you just start getting detached or you know um but also with this naturally i feel like you obviously you could be scattered i feel like with dudes but maybe this is just a, a dude thing maybe it's just, just me being a male hater you know but i feel like with dudes specifically this could make you because listen you're detached right and sure aquarius is a fixed sign but aquarius can also be in that sense like a nymphomaniac and a promiscuous nymphomaniac with this particular placement you know where it's like um if one person if a particular group or if a particular relationship that you have isn't fulfilling a particular need then you may be the type of person that's like okay well let's get this need fulfilled by somebody else or let's get these um let me associate myself and get close to somebody else who I can associate myself with who can provide the stimulation that you need at the time, you know? Because sometimes you just even need fresh relationships. And that's the thing with, like, the in conjunction with Aquarius and the fourth house, where it's like you misunderstand having close having closeness and family and, you know, you misunderstand having, like, a, a sense of, like, um, home. Because to you... And even... See, having a sense of home entails that there's a routine in how you guys do things like for example if you and a group of friends you guys are used to going to a specific place before you do specific things or you guys are used to doing these specific like particular things it's like a routine that you, it's like a routine that you all do because it makes you all comfortable and it makes you all close and Aquarius may misunderstand this you know so you also may misunderstand these things in your relationship like you may misunderstand the, the 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 value of being close with someone you may misunderstand the you know the concept of even like um yeah of building like a steady even a steady like emotional connection but a steady a steady emotional foundation with someone you know what i'm saying you may misunderstand those things in your relationships even though like and once again it's gonna it's gonna go back to um aquarius is not knowing how to have like interpersonal relationship you know where when you do get close to someone like it's better for you to it's like you are a lot better at being all lovey-dovey when you are with your friends like for example, let's say i'm dating you right you and me are dating and we're going to a bunch of our friends that's when you will be all lovey-dovey on me but when it's just the two of us you want your space and it's confusing <laughs> like it's weird you know what i'm saying like that's that's just how it is with aquarius um mercury in the seventh house and that's what you naturally just think about you know because you feel like yeah wow well, we don't have to do that when we're together because you know how i feel so let's just keep it at that you know because it's also a thing of personal space aquarius as i say it does it deals with space so you feel like you need space within your relationships and in that way it makes you someone that's difficult to date because relationships require an emotional connection and like spending time but you see because it's aquarius because it's unique and original and it's creating its own ideas but also saturn is there so there's detachment and shit and it's also a bit awkward so that's just how you are in your relationships too and you probably know this about yourself you know and i'm pretty maybe you feel bad about it maybe you don't feel bad about it you know i think it, it depends on um person to person but i do feel like you've probably 
either a you felt like you have um what's this intimacy issues i think with this you could also definitely have some intimacy issues or you may like feel like yeah i have intimacy issues just because you don't know how to have like closeness with people that you get close with because you always at some point need a long time away from these people as a way to rejuvenate and that's your love language which is weird but that's how you think about things you know but yeah for the most part what you naturally think about the most is your relationships your um interpersonal relationships and also yeah just how you relate i feel like the way that you relate is very unique too so it could also be a situation where you probably would prefer being around people once again you know who um are individual like who have their who can hold who can hold their own who don't necessarily need your attention all the time you know you know what i'm saying maybe maybe that's what you would want okay that doesn't want to happen but yeah that's mercury and aquarius in the and same moving on to mercury and aquarius in the eighth house um so we know eighth house rules death you know transformation sex um you know how you how you handle ter ter turmoil and chaotic situations you know so having aquarius in your eighth house as a cancer rising yeah as a can cancerian rising you are someone that is and look, look aquarius and scorpio as i've always i've mentioned in the aquarius video have a lot in common you know because they're both ruled by they co-ruled by outer planets and they are fixed signs and they are also very intense signs at that and they both rule like their um outer pla like uranus and pluto rule change and transformation in some way it's just pluto is more longevity and then uranus is more like not always longevity because it's always consistently changing you know so there's like always rapid change unpredictable rapid changes but they may not be life-changing in that sense you know they may change a lot but they may not like yeah let me just say they may not be extremely life-changing right but anyway having mercury and aquarius in the eighth house as a cancer rising so having a cancer rising naturally how you um take care of yourself and your personality is very private you know because it's cancer is a water sign but having aquarius in the eighth house now um makes it like i feel like it gives it a double emphasis on your privacy you know because once again having mercury in your water houses makes you someone that hides how you really think because how you really think being it it being in a water house makes it like a soft spot you know what i'm saying so you don't necessarily want to open yourself up to random people so that they can judge you or whatever and this is aquarius right so aquarius isn't always like the most relatable sign in fact aquarius isn't relatable but they're cool because of that you know what i'm saying so having it in the eighth house you're naturally someone that doesn't always communicate what you think but you observe everything and you even see the deeds because naturally with Aquarius you do observe the details and you see parts like the 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 well the bullshit really that's what it is you can see past it but having it in the eighth house makes it it gives you a more paranoia that's it because Aquarius isn't necessarily a sign that's paranoid you know like we don't associate Aquarius with paranoia or worrying too much because it's an air sign so they're detached so they can you know they'll be able to figure a way out but having it in the eighth house this does and if you have your sun here too or your venus or your mars this makes you someone who's a lot more like quiet this, these are the quiet aquariuses and when they do communicate it's usually and it, having aquarius mercury you usually not someone that likes to talk about how you feel about things but having it in the eighth house this let naturally makes you hide how you think but also makes you ultra suspicious of people you know and suspicious of people's intentions with speaking to you because naturally aquariuses don't are uh, um untrust untrusting to people that like want to get close to them you know i guess that's also something that they share with scorpio but for different reasons for different reasons Aquarius will feel like, oh my god, you're trying to use me for something. Or you... Because, listen, Aquarius is dope, right? So they naturally have this energy of like, oh, I'm so unique and I'm so cool. So they will feel like, oh, you only want to be my friend because I'm so cool. And you think that by associating with me that you will get some kind of street cred. So Aquarius will run away from that, like those people, those situations. Even though high-key Aquarius do that, literally. They only hang out with people 
because they can you know gain something from that but they don't want that to be done to them you know so that's the only reason why they get suspicious because they don't want that shit to happen but with scorpios it's more so like oh my god like you know they feel like you're in, you're threatening their i guess their privacy you know what i'm saying it's more so with the emotions and you know protecting their internal world and not getting anybody too close because it's really just out of fear you know so it's different reasons, but it kind of would look the same. But having Aquarius then in the eighth house, that adds that emphasis on, oh my God, you probably, you. Know, it's like not only do you feel suspicious that people only want to be associated with you because of you being a cool person and, you know, them wanting to use you because of the street cred, but you also then get scared because you feel like, oh my God, you only want to get close to me so you can know about me, so you can actually talk shit about me. And, you know, then you start to, and then that's when your cancer rising kicks in on wanting to protect yourself, you know, so then that's when you can get very snappy, you snap, or you can be, get very sharp with your words as soon as you feel threatened or you, as soon as you feel like someone is, you know, overstepping their boundaries or something like that. That's how you think though. But for the most part, when it comes to, you know, telling people what you really think, you know... And not necessarily that's to say that you that you lie, but you know what to. It's like you know how to take surf a surface level um answer and then make it kind of more grandeur so that you can hide what you really think. You know, because eighth house deals with sacred things, things that we keep secret, but things that we keep sacred to us. You know, and things that you keep sacred. Usually you don't want to expose that to everybody. You know, you would only expose that to people who are intimate and people who know you like that and that you trust. And then with this with this particular placement, it will give you like themes of being, as I say, paranoid. You know, and you don't trust people too much because you're always looking into the ulterior motives of why people are even there. And then you know, you looking into it sometimes, you may pass up on some cool people that you could have hung out with just because you felt overly suspicious. And meantime, that person could have been a whole cool person, but I guess you'll never know now because you ghosted them or you know you were very icy cold, aloof, detached with them. You know, definitely it's giving more themes of like, you know, a little bit of dark, like this is the dark emo kid that used to draw like some weird dark emo kid that drew some weird ass, dark ass, weird pictures that scared everybody. But you are like, oh, what? But this is art. This is art. And then people look at you like, oh my God, sweet tail, sweet, sweet baby, you need a therapist or something, you know? those vibes um moving into yeah. mercury in aquarius in the ninth house so we know your ninth house deals with um, um, um your your well religion or spirituality just your experiences and how you add meaning and reasonings into your experiences so for example you know you i don't know you drop your spoon and you're like oh my god this happened because you know that that that's you tapping into your ninth house or you, you you break up with someone and you're like, oh my God, the universe is trying to teach me to, boom, now you're in your ninth house, you know? So it's always that higher meaning and reasoning, but also just like your wisdom and your experiences and your faith and how you expand in your, in your, in your faith and shit like that, you know? Those vibes. Anyway, so moving on to, I'm uh, not moving on. So with mo um, Mercury in Aquarius in the ninth house for my Gemini risings, you guys are naturally people who are constant. And mind you, Mercury falls in 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 the ninth house, right? Because this is where Jupiter lies. So, but because it's the air sign, so Mercury still does kind of well, you know. At least it has some kind of support. But naturally, this makes this this is giving like this is giving the super um god complex type of thinking you know because once again aquarius is already thinking outside of the box but looking from things objectively and ninth house also does that but from a philosophical point so when you bring these two together you're probably someone that like you're like the know-it-all but sometimes it can be a little bit like annoying you know because you always have an answer for everything <laughs> Like, and you're a Gemini rising, so uh, you talk a lot, but you always have an answer for everything, and it's always, like, you always sound sarcastic, so people can always feel like, why do you always, like, why do you always have something snarky to say, you know, and for you, it's just, like, that's just how you are, you know, you're a very philosophical, wise, smart person, and you have a very broad, detached um, way of seeing the world and seeing people, you know. It's just that sometimes you may really believe that you're smarter than everybody just because you see things from such a high, objective, um, non-personal way, you know. And even things that you should take personally, you always kind of, like, want to, um, 
raise it in a in such a way where it you kind of not make it personal like so you can look at your own problems from like a detached point point of view but sometimes you know you i feel like and hopefully you have some pisces maybe shit like a cute um virgo moon a cute cancer moon you know something that help you out there a little bit help you connect to your emotions so that you can understand that okay how you feel about things is just as important as you know looking at it from the grand perspective of like because you can be the type of person you know that movie um lady bird and and shorty was um in bed with this dude and then she they, she lost her virginity hit to him and then she and then he was like oh yeah it's no big deal and then she freaked out and she was like what do you mean it's not a big deal this is my virginity and then this guy went on to, went on to be like yo dude the world is dying three million people are hungry in africa they Basically, he was just, he went on to say, like, there are more important things than losing your virginity. And then that girl, who's probably an Aries, was like, bro, how dare you try to invalidate how I feel? Like, you really just took my virginity and just, and it doesn't matter that there are 3 billion people in the world that are hungry and dying. Like, you literally, like, this this is affecting me right now. And you, you are Chris Mercury in the ninth house. You are that guy. You, that person that, because you look at everything from, like, a bigger perspective. And you, you look at everything, like okay, my problems aren't bigger than world hunger. My problems aren't bigger than, you know, famine or whatever. And it's like, dude, like, sure, those things are important, but how you feel about something and your subjective outlook on things, it's just as important. It is important just because it's you and you may not necessarily look at um, your own problems as things that are like significant, you know, because you also may even detach from your problems or you may o overly analyze them and then feel like, ah, oh, well, well, it's not that important. So then you just completely disregard how you feel about situations and then you don't deal with it. And then you're like, well, it's not as important as the big asteroid that's about to hit Earth. Or you may think like that. You may think like, oh, well, well, when that big asteroid comes and, hit and hits Earth, and that's not going to matter. So why should I care about it? You know, and that's just how you deal with like, that's how you think. That's how you process things and that's how you um give advice to other people like you always want other people to also look at the bigger picture of things like yo bro most of your life problems aren't even a big deal you know other people have it worse than you and even then you see you see you see in that way you just kind of like invalidate shit and that's not nice especially when you are on water signs or fire signs that are very subjective and care very much about how they feel about something you know so i I mean, my advice, get around a fire sign so that you can also connect to how you feel about things. But, I mean, you know, it's good and bad to everything. So, and even with that, like, how you think about that, like, I understand that. I get it, you know, because that is true. And, you know, there are millions of things that are happening in the world that, I guess, need attention and deserve attention. But you and our emotions deserve attention, too. Because that is self-care. Anyway, um, moving on to Mercury in Aquarius in the 10th house, right? For all the Taurus risings. Um, so, 10th house rules your, 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 your reputation. How the outside world you know, view you. Like, people who don't know you like that, how they view you. How they see you. You know, your reputation, your career. Um, how you get to the status quo of something. How you get to the highest status quo of something right so having mercury in aquarius in the 10th house this this is a um a cool little aspect because um uranus what am i talking about aquarius rules is ruled by saturn and saturn rules the 10th and the 11th house so you know aquarius kind of does well in the 10th house but how it plays out is having mercury in the aquarius in the 10th house this this makes you something that someone that's constantly thinking about like um it's like you think about who you should associate with. Because listen, with 10th house, house is the house of I use, right? So with this, you also could be a user where you only associate. Well, this is actually not even a bad thing. This is actually a good thing, especially in business, right? You someone that only wants to associate yourself with people who are in fields that you want to be in or that you are already in like for example in jersey in johannesburg right we especially like in brahm like the city vibes right there's a lot of artists djs models um musicians uh did i miss something like dance whatever there's a whole bunch of people there right and for example if i'm if i'm a musician right and i have my mercury in the course in the 10th house how i even think about life is i have to associate myself 
with those people, right? I have to follow, I'm, I'm gonna follow them, I'm gonna, you know, go to the same areas as they do, and, you know, just take pictures of them, really get to associate myself with them as a way to include them, aka use them, and by use, like, this could be a bad or a good thing, you know, but usually, I feel like with this, it's usually a good thing, because then you get to associate yourself with people that you would want to do business with, people that you want to grow your own brand with, you know, people that you want to associate with, because they are doing similar, it's like, that. it's like you, it's like you're always thinking, like, okay, who, who can I collaborate with, you know, that type of thing, especially if you... You know, yeah, in Jersey, like, we're, we're still kind of steady building, like, the the, the the music scene. And, like, there's a whole bunch of upcoming dope artists. Um, especially, like, in different genres, like, alternative artists. Because hip-hop here is praised a lot, you know. And then, like, the rock, indie, folk, alternative, they, they like, put on the back burner. But that's slowly rising, you know. So that type of situation where if you're in Jersey, you would want to associate yourself with either everybody... You know, because you understand, like, in the future... And your tour is rising, right? So you're already thinking ahead, right? And even your your cardinal cross... So your first house, fourth house, seventh house, and tenth house are all fixed, right? They're all ruled by fixed signs. So, if, but as I was saying, having a tour is rising. You're naturally thinking long-term. You know what I'm saying? So this helps a lot because now you, now you can think, like, okay... If I associate myself with all these people and I get to collaborate with all these people in the future... This is gonna help me, you know, build and um, build my own brand. Because it's how you think is, okay, in the future, because I made a song with them, people will also associate me with being, you know, a dope artist because I'm around dope artists. So it's like you you understand the whole thing of who you associate with really does affect, like, your own reputation. Because that's what it is. Like, you are known for being associated with people. And because you understand this, you understand that it's important to associate yourself with the right people because then you can be associated. Like when people think, oh yeah, that's, um, yeah, that's Tando, bro. I remember Tando, Tando's that girl that hangs out with all those artists, you know? And that's what you, that's essentially what you want. And then, they, you know, people, that's how people would talk about you. They'd be like, oh yeah, Tando, Tando's that girl that hangs out with those, with those um, other artists because she's also an artist. That's, oh, Tando's that artist that hangs out with those dudes that also make music. You know, that's how you think about things. So naturally, you don't even waste your time around people that don't. Unless obviously it's your cousin and, you know, obviously every person is, like, like things are circumstantial, you know, whatever. But for the most part, like, if you have to choose, you would literally choose to just associate yourself with people that are in the same field as you, you know, and with this, this adds, like, a, a double layer of, like, being a bit cold and detached, you know, because Saturn is, like, heavily influenced, um, here, so you're just someone that, like, you don't even waste your time, like, you're just always around people that are artists or people that are doing similar things that you are doing because you like that inspiration, you know, yes, you do still ghost them because, obviously, you still need your time to be by yourself, have your own thoughts to yourself, you know, come back to your little Aquarius cocoon and your little Aquarius incubator or whatever. But for the most part, like, if you are out and about, yeah, you're associated with people that are doing things that you want to be associated with because, you know, that's, that's, the, that's what's constantly on your mind. You know, also super, super good with money. I don't know what the fuck. Lost two, lost two houses. Mercury and Aquarius in the 11th house for a for Aries risings, right? So Aries rising, you have all your signs in their um, ruling houses. So lucky for you. Great. Anyway, so um, Mercury and Aquarius in the 11th house. So this just adds an extra emphasis on, you know, you... Like, what you constantly... Th and you probably super, like, super interested in, like, technology. You probably... These are the engineers. You're probably into engineering or, you know, um, gaming, coding, um, IT. Just anything involving computers. Like, that's something that you are super good at. And you love technology. Like, phones. You could probably fix a phone. You could fix... You, you're probably the person people call at home, especially if you're a dude, you know, because it's like, oh, niggas can fix everything, great, right? so amazing, you know. I don't know, if you're a shorty, you probably do this shit too, right? But uh, Or maybe if you're a shorty, you're probably into, like, tattoos, because Aquarius is also, you know, that's that's something cool, like, that's something aquarius -y to me. But for the most part, technologies. But as I was saying, if you're a guy, you're probably the, the guy that your mom, your granny calls whenever the TV's broken to fix, whenever you get radio is broken you just know how to like put things together and make things work or even a car like you can you could probably know you know how to like 
manufacture or fix a car. You remember, you know, if you watch Shameless, you know Lip. Lip, um, this is giving Lip because Lip, Lip is a genius. Remember, remember those few seasons in the beginning where they told us Lip was a genius and he could just fix anything, and then like t- towards the end of like the like season 10 11 we realized okay lip can fix anything he can fix a car he can fix the microwave yeah it's giving mercury in aquarius in the 11th house because you're a genius and you can it's because it, for you it's also like a, a mental challenge you know and that's what you enjoy and this also definitely def, definitely a, um adds an emphasis on on like your detachment especially if this is like you conjuncting your sun sign you know where you are very detached and you like making new friends because those new friends don't have any pre um predisposed obligation on how you should act or how because it's like a clean slate you know when you meet people it's always a clean slate you can be whatever say whatever you want but when you have friends that you've known for a long time it's always an obligation or maybe you may feel obligated to be a, a certain way you know that type of thing and then if you've shown actions to them and then they've been like they showed you that oh my god whoa you're so weird and they show you that they were uncomfortable then that makes you feel uncomfortable to be around them and then you want to ghost them and then that that's what makes you want to be more receptive and open to you know um meeting new friends you know but definitely you're someone if you have social media you're probably you know either working your way up to be super popular because with this you get popular super easy and people naturally like know you a lot whether they like you or they don't like you you're just someone that people know of you know and you're very well known or people a lot of people know of you even if they don't know you even if they haven't met you like you're one of those people that people know of you you know and they know like a little bit about you and then when they meet you they're like oh my god dude is that and you know but either way you don't even you don't even care because you're you're in your own world anyway you know with your own little gadgets fixing things for your grandmother that's so cute, mm. you know, um, <laughs> um, but yeah, naturally, and if you're not into like gadgets and fixing, definitely into science, physics, biology, maybe not biology, physics, definitely physics, um, or, um, what's this, as I said, engineer, but do you think that has to do with like, you know, like even rocket science, anything scientific, even engineering science, I don't know if engineering has a science, I don't know. I don't have my Mercury and Aquarius in the 11th house. I don't, but it would be great to one day in an incarnation. Actually, no, I don't want to come back here. <laughs> Never mind. But, oh, okay, yeah. But yeah, that's Mercury and Aquarius in the 11th house. These guys naturally like are super, super, super smart and very detached and very logical. These are the guys that are super logical. I don't know why my phone is getting. Oh, it's because of the sun. It's because of the sun. But anyway, I have one more house left. Okay, no, that's fine now. That's great. Ooh. Anyway, but yeah, that's Mercury Mercury and Aquarius in the 11th house, people. These guys are super smart. And these guys are very logical. These are the super, super logical people that, like... Bruh, you... <laughs> super logical people that usually rely on their logic. And probably they... You don't trust your emotions unless you have like a, a moon in Cancer, a moon in Pisces, Scorpio, you know. But for the most part, it would be difficult for you to um, like think in an emotional way, you know, because most of your thoughts are like very logical and logic based. And when you communicate or argue, you're always looking at the facts and the common sense behind even an argument. And you may even feel like arguments are a waste of your time, you know. Because you like to say what you have to say and then you feel like that should be the end of it because you have a brain and you think that your common sense surpasses anyone's emotion, even your own, and that it's they're unreliable because they don't bring concrete results and facts and, you know, uh, 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 yeah, they don't bring results that we need in order to efficiently work through things. Because for you, it's all about efficiency and like structure and things making sense and then once that's done you're off to the next project in order to sharpen your mental brain your intellect once again you know that type of thing um mm, yeah um also I, I think i forgot to mention that you guys are um 
you could be very much into t- um what's this not technology yes technology but the internet like social media you may be super big on social media it could be an, a social media fiend social media addict like the, we wake up the first thing you do is go on social media you know but also you're giving know it all i think i mentioned that was it in the ninth house because the same thing like you know it all like you always have an answer for something but also you you could be very like your creativity if you're not into gadgets or whatever and you're like an artist you probably have like also weird art like you're the weird person that draws aliens like pregnant aliens you know with eyes on their hands or whatever you know that that's your thing it's weird but it's not creepy like scorpio it's just weird and otherworldly and just like um hard to understand but cool that's the difference that's the difference with the scorpio because the scorpio art may be like scary creepy type shit but aquarius art may be alien weird cosmic type shit you know it's still both of them are still weird but aquarius is a lot more acceptable because they're an air sign and air is relatable you know yeah moving on to mercury and aquarius in the 12th house last but not least so we know 12th house has to do with your dreams you know your imaginations your illusions your creativity how you unconsciously connect to just the world like how you emotionally connect to the world and how you um yeah unconsciously just connect to people around you you know those that you don't know like that and those that you do know like that you know um but having aquarius here in the 11th house for pisces risings you guys i feel like this and mind you aquarius doesn't like being in the 12th house either right doesn't like being in the 9th house or the 12th house right so having mercury in aquarius in the ninth house you guys are people with incredible imaginations like you are and you have a pisces rising incredible imagination dude i don't know if you're whether you are a tattoo artist whether you are a, a visual artist a 3d artist whether you're a sculptor whether you are a interior designer whether you're a gamer and you design games video games whether you um, create bank cards for banks, whether you design curtains, whatever it is you do, that shit is so creative. And it's always like influenced with like your own um, unique imagination and your own unique way of like um, creating things. And it's like, it's like it, it it adds a double layer of like you being super imaginative, but it also, I feel like it's giving, it's also giving you could be very unrealistic you know like you could a you could also try to make things that are uh, that are unrealistic very realistic because aquarius knows how to make something out of nothing you know and make it look so dope but i also feel like maybe explaining that sometimes could make people feel like confused and also with that it could make you a person that doesn't like to share you don't like to share your ideas so you like to work on them and then only present them when they're finished or complete but at the same time you may have an issue with completing things also because you may at first dedicate yourself to something especially like something artistic and then you may go through those phases where you're like oh my god i actually can't perfect this you know and then you start getting super doubtful of your own capabilities because you're not consistent or you may feel like you're consistent but then there you go uranus changing your mind and you're also a pisces rising so how you deal with your personal your personal issues may be unrealistic too and then you you may be someone that always looks to okay well like let me just have faith that it will happen but then your faith is always met with you doing nothing about it you know or you just kind of like procrastinating those things you know so it's like you could sleep on yourself a lot which also you know sleep rules the 12th house you could sleep on your own uniqueness you know because subconsciously and you know 12th house uses subconscious subconsciously you're someone like with like immense creativity and like a lot of just unique ideas and just unconsciously you are a, a unique person you know it's just you may like hide that a lot too because it's 12th house and 12th house does hide things you may hide that or you may only express your thoughts when you are in isolation you know that's when you, the best ideas come to you but then when it actually comes to you taking action especially if you have your son here you may procrastinate 
procrastinate a lot so hopefully you have like a maybe even a, Cap a capricorn sun but thing is also capricorns can be lazy too that's the thing but at least you have a lot like a, um what's the self-motivation to get up and like you know be on your own ass about finishing something at least that's what capricorns can do even if they are lazy they can get up and do something about it you know but if you're a pisces sun with this with your mercury and aquarius definitely someone that may be procrastinating procrastinating a lot and then you may take to social media to be like hey guys so do you guys think i should do you guys think i should you know and then that's when you get support from the internet because of you know aquarius rules the internet and stuff but that's not a bad thing because sometimes that's i guess that's what you need you know but that's naturally what you think about i think you you even get like you subconsciously want the masses validation of what you should do subconsciously that's what you do but also subconsciously you feel like you're friends with everybody like you're just naturally a cool person and i feel like with this you really exude like a dope vibe but it has like some kind of um neptune because listen with uranus it makes it cool but neptune in the 12th house make it also dreamy you know like um out otherworldly and kind of out of touch and that's the vibe that you exude also when you communicate with people like you're, you're like you're distant but you're very communicative but sometimes also what you communicate about is like people things that people don't really understand so you also may be maybe the type of person where when you start to talk you may feel like people like you know when people don't hear you they go like uh -huh, and then they move on and they're like what the fuck you may you may experience a lot of that you know and it may make you feel like you're ostracized it may make you feel really bad because you're like damn like why can't people understand me or you may feel alienated or you may just feel like oh my god i don't like i'm uncomfortable with being a person because people just like don't get me at all you know especially like with the topics that you talk about and even just having mercury in your ninth in your 12th house like it's just it's never working out well for mercury you know so but you generally like the topics that you talk about are like very existential and if you're around people who don't get it or people who are low vibrational or whatever or people who you know just just generally people who don't get it like they'll make you feel like oh my god i should just never speak ever again but this that's the thing like aquarius is the air sign and they like to talk so that will make you feel very uncomfortable because not being heard and not being listening listened to that's something that really hurts you you know and that's why you like isolating yourself a lot because you feel like oh well it's better to just be here in my own space than to you know not be understood by people you know, because you really are misunderstood with this particular placement, especially this one. Oh my God, very misunderstood, you know. But once again, it's really all about finding people that do get you. And I mean, the world is full, is like full with a whole bunch of human beings. So out of all these, you just need to move. I don't know, maybe it's also a cash thing, you know. But there is the internet and the internet is filled with a whole bunch of people, like, the communities on the internet, for example, like if you are into like astrology, there's an astrology community, you know, and that community involves like self help, spirituality, da da da. So if you're like that, you know, you follow pages like that. If you're into like cooking chefs and you like talking about cooking and all that, you follow pages like that. Go on internet and you know associate yourself with people like that, you know. So you don't necessarily have to commit yourself or stay in places that don't welcome or don't even understand your way of thinking, you know, and your way of thinking is very unique. You probably, someone that is, you know, you could figure out quantum physics type shit, you know, on some Einstein type shit where like your brain surpasses physics where it's like, you need to, you study quantum physics, metaphysics, bro. You do metaphysical things, bro, because you're that intelligent. But also just think about like, you know how doctors have like doctor lingo and we don't know anything they're saying that's basically you're like you're a doctor and sometimes you don't know what you're saying because the words you use we don't we don't use that or even i'm assuming like the the lingo that rocket scientists use me as an astrologer i wouldn't know what the hell they're saying you know so it's the same with you you know so once again you just hang out with people that do understand what you're saying and in that way you you can be with people that get you you know so you don't have to feel bad or feel alienated or whatever but yeah that's my video on mercury and aquarius through the houses uh, I'm so excited. We're literally about to freaking finish the series. One more video. Well, two more videos, but technically one, technically one more video left and we'll be done with the series. So thank you guys so much for rocking with me for these four months. I know it took me a very long time, but you know, what's the rush? Because I'm going to be here for a while. 
Um, but yeah, if you guys want a reading from me, hit me up on my IG. I'll send you a menu of the readings that I provide. And other than that, I'll see you in my next video. Thank you so much for the love and the support. I can't wait. Well, I'm very thankful for the, for, for the growth of this channel and the support and just like the, I guess the validation. Fuck it. I'm grateful for the validation that I'm getting from you guys. Um, and yeah, thank you so much. And I'll see you in my next video. Thank <laughs> you.